Hello everyone, my name is Legend Rani and this game is Rise of Kingdoms. Best legendary pair for cavalry, archers and infantry in Rise of Kingdoms. Probably you're very very interested in just working on one pair that you know is going to give you guaranteed results. You know you have multiple utilities for that pair. You know you can use them on plenty plenty of places. Sunset Canyon, Ark of Osiris, Field Battles, PvE. I want to give you one pair for each and every type of troops except siege <laughs> that will actually benefit you a lot in rise of kingdoms now first thing before we're gonna go further and talk more about legendaries you have to remember a couple of things you want to know how expressive is to upgrade those legendaries you want to know approximately the stars to bring them to six star these are two very important things what you want to know after that is keeping them at one star to actually upgrade their primary skill it's also one of the most important things usually their primary skill is the most important one after that unlocking the second one in situation of saladin then the third one so you can max them one by one in some situation is not like that for example we can pick double c over here you're noticing that his second skill is the barbarian damage and you're noticing that his third skill is the calf damage so once you max out his primary skill you want to jump to the third so it all depends on the commanders if it's worth it to keep them at second star but the primary skill is the most important equipment also apply from the primary commander so you want to make sure that you have the right equipment if that commander is a primary commander for you talents also only apply from the primary commander so second in command pretty much brings it to be a skill carrier now going on to the pairs that i was talking about i'm gonna say one pair for calves is gonna be one pair for archers and it's gonna be two pairs for infantry now you're probably wondering why two pairs for infantry that's gonna be because of preferences so once i'm gonna get to the infantry i'm gonna explain and i'm gonna tell more in details why infantry they have two pairs now the reason i want to do this video and the, the reason i want to talk about one legendary pair for each type of troops infantry two is because you're probably not so driven of, or of just going like full cavalry like i am or full infantry like some players are or some players are even full archers uh, very few of them to tell you the truth you probably just want to upgrade one pair from from calves one pair from archers one pair, pair from infantry or two or two and you want to know some really really good pair that it's actually worth investing in Starting with calves, <coughs> the pair is Genghis Khan primary with Sadin as a second in command. Now, both commanders from cavalry, they give you a lot, a lot of utilities overall. And that is PvE, PvP, Sunset Canyon, Ark of Osiris, uh, Lost Kingdom, Garrison Situation, that will be Sadin. Anywhere you want to use these commanders, at least one of them they will give you a lot a lot of benefits and a lot a lot of utilities in many situations you can use them both of them even rallies Genghis and Saladin in rallies with Genghis primary they are very very good and very very powerful the reason I'm also starting with uh, cavalry is because of Saladin so Fa Saladin is very very unique commander that has the conquering talent tree and that is his fourth skill because of the conquering talent tree usually they get a skill that is related to conquering his first three primary skills are the most important one meaning that you can do a very minimum investment on Sadin and actually make him very very powerful 5551 five, you need 380 sculptures plus 10 to summon him so that's the minimum investment that you can do on Saladin or the recommended investment and you can actually get in field battle ready on the other hand Genghis Khan requires to be expertise because his expertise is literally second to none this is probably one of the most powerful expertises in the game right now because his primary skill is 1700 damage factor and having a 30% chance to get that again that's 
quite a powerful nuke and sometimes it just go on you know one after another and that's some really really great value or especially if it goes off right at the beginning that's again a lot a lot of damage you're gaining the troops advantage over your opponents so Genghis and Saladin, very, very strong pair of a lot of utilities. You can check their specific commander spotlight I'm where I'm talking specifically about each and every commander in details, even more pairs. But pretty much what this video is about is just giving you some advices. If you just want to focus on that one pair, you're probably free to play, you're probably low spender. You can't max that many legendaries. You don't want to throw in here and there your, your sculptures. You want to make sure that if you invest in something, will actually give you a lot of benefits. Now, you're probably wondering, why am I not talking about Attila? Why is not Attila and Takeda on the list? They're OP. Everyone is talking about them. They're still very, very powerful, good for field battles and exceptional for rallies. That's pretty much about it. So you cannot classify a commander that is exceptional for rallies to commanders that you can literally use them everywhere else that's the whole purpose of the video now the second i want to talk about archers and about archers will be very very surprising what i'm telling you that is artemisia as primary with ysg as a second now the reason i'm including artemisia and ysg for archers that is because Artemisia has a lot, a lot of utilities. You can use her in garrison, you can use her in field battles, you can use her in PvE, Sunset Canyon, probably even rallies. But if you want to use her in rallies, I will literally put her as a second in command. But if you have YSG, which is probably one of the best investment in the Rise of Kingdoms, I tell you that. Anywhere you use this commander, it's literally good. <laughs> you want to use him in Sunset Canyon, in Seroli, wherever you use him, AoE Barbarians, once you obtain his expertise, a lot, a lot of players are doing that and he's very, very good at it. He's doing a wonderful job. It's never wrong investing in YSG, whatever you want to do, really, really worth it. Now, with Artemisia, I actually think that that's going to be a comeback for Archers on the field battles. Now, by the time you get Artemisia, there's going to be other commanders that you'll definitely max out by just open gold keys or close to max out. But Artemisia and YSG have a really, really good synergy on skills. And like I mentioned, even for Rally, you can use YSG primary, you can put Artemisia as a second. You'll have the skill talent tree to actually empower and boost even more their nuke and 1800 damage factor that's really not something you want to give away even though she does some 300 to her own troops that's not such a big deal she also has continuous damage 400 each second for three seconds plus a chance to silence herself which might be a little bit of a downfall but increasing all the damage dealt for five seconds by 50 percent now all damage you have to think about that is normal attack is counter attack additional damage skill damage so you're probably wondering why am i talking about additional damage well this is pretty much additional damage where it says here continuously taking damage that's additional damage with a chance so even this 400 will be empowered by her four skill so definitely artemisia or ysg is one of the pairs from archers that you want to look into if you want to invest in an archer pair that's one of it and by the time you're gonna max out your YSG, probably Artemisia will be unlocked or it will come up in your kingdom and then you can just work on her. Genghis and Saladin, unfortunately, they both show up in the same time, but you can definitely just work on one from the wheel and then you can work on the other one once you get him from the car king. Another thing about Artemisia, if you're not having very, very great results with her and YSG on the battlefield, Obviously, on the battlefield, I would put her first because of the defense talent tree, and uh, that will make your archers way more tankier, and you'll definitely survive longer on the, the battlefield. You'll also have garrison. So imagine that you can put in your city Artemisia and YSG. You'll have two garrison commanders, legendaries, and you can use them on your garrison, on field battles, everywhere. On top of that, when you're going to level up either 
YSG or Artemisia. You can do AOE Barbarians because they both do a little bit of AOE. So personally, the synergy between them is really, really great in terms of damage. So I'm really looking forward to try them out. And like I mentioned, if Artemis and YSG 4 field battles will not give you the results that you're actually looking for, by the time you're gonna unlock her or upgrade her or even max her, you have L Seed, which I haven't in invest any kind of universal sculptures. This is only what I got from the gold keys. And I have about 800 gold keys right now, which pretty much will bring me very close to maximum by opening those keys. And I'm playing for like four, almost 500 days. Now, you realize that at the moment you get to this point, your Elsa will pretty much be very close to be max as well. And this is a confirmed pair that is actually doing very well. Artemisia with Elsa. So this is another way where Elsa can actually have a comeback. They both disable attack, while Elsid has additional damage that can be empowered by 4th skill from Artemisia. Artemisia has defense and health on the archers. Elsid will provide you the march speed that you need for, from, for your archers when things get actually ugly on the battlefield. So you'll gain a lot of march speed so you can actually retreat, replenish and go back. That would be a very, very tanking pair and a very good utility, disabling a little bit of AoE pair. Nothing very wrong in it. You can check Elsid Commander Spotlight. I definitely talked a lot more about it. You can check it there with Talent Trees as well. And same for the Talent Trees on Genghis or Saladin or YSG. You can check their Commander Spotlight. There is way more details and way more detailed about the Commanders. Now, let's go about Infantry. <laughs> because hell it's about time now for infantry like i mentioned is two pairs and those two pairs are because of preferences now the first pair is richard with alexander and the second pair is charles martel with constantine now the reason i'm saying that you're probably having preferences is because Charles Martel and Constantine, they excel very, very well on Garrison, on Field Battles, on Sunset Canyon, Arc of Osiris, but not PvE. So PvE as infantry, they don't excel at all. Anywhere else except PvE, Charles Martel and Constantine will definitely give you the results you're expecting for infantry. On the other hand, you have Richard and Alex, which excel anywhere else except Garrison. <laughs> Because of Attila Takeda being released, Richard is not really a recommended commander for Garrison because you're probably wondering, but Richard has Garrison and defense. Yes, but because of the heal, it just gives you too many dead on your Garrison. You want to do it in a flag or city, it doesn't matter. Wherever it's going to be a Garrison situation, Richard does not really excel because of Attila Takeda. It will just give you so many dead that you will definitely be very unhappy about the situation. So Richard and Alex again for any situation will be very very good except Garrison will definitely give you a lot of results and the results that you're probably looking for and Charles Martel with Constantine will give you the results everywhere else except pve unless you actually need something to tank in pve you just need something very tanky but so far all the seroli events all the pve events that we had it wasn't proven that you can you actually need something like that something very very tanky we will see in the future is that if that actually is gonna be a situation but until then these are going to be your two options for infantry. So that's why I mentioned is preferences. You want to go more nuking. You like something very defensive. You want to go turtling. So you have the two options for infantry as well. The reason I didn't went with Guan Yu or Leonidas is purely because they are kind of rally oriented. So Guan Yu is kind of just a rally commander, exactly like Edward. Edward is being used on for archers, is being used on battlefield, but it's not really excelling so much. Same as Guan Yu is being used on battlefield, but again, he's kind of going down really, really fast. I mean, I've noticed it even myself, whenever he's primary, he's kind of going down very, very fast. So based on that, I had to choose the pairs because you want to do some investments. You want to know that 
you're not just gonna keep that commander over there looking pretty uh, level 60 at 6 star like I have Edward and just actually wait for KVK to utilize him because that's where exactly I'm gonna use next my Edward pretty much rallying cities <laughs> on the KVK once it's gonna start or whenever it's gonna be the next one you want to do investments that will actually you know serve you for a very long time and in a lot of places this was the purpose of the video and this is the purpose of these marches for that reason i just want to talk about some specific marches that will definitely help you a lot or in a lot of situations now this is your boy Geroni signing off and i do hope you find this very very helpful maybe it will help you make up your mind on which commander you should actually invest on Peace out, yo, and take care.